study confidence intervals. This is when we want to know something about the population mean mu. If you know about the sample, but you want to say it's true of the population, the first place to start is called the best point estimate. That means if you know x bar, but you want to say something about mu, the best guess you could take, in other words, estimate, guess, it's just a nice way of saying it, would be to say that mu is approximately whatever x bar is. And in this case, x bar is 81.6. Another way to talk about the population mean is what's called a confidence interval for population means. Mu is what we're looking for. Mu is what we're looking for, but we really know something about x bar. What we don't know is how much wiggle room we have. That's what E represents. Technical term, wiggle room. The plus or minus that you get in an election year for the potential results, that's what that's talking about written in interval notation, x bar minus e, and x bar plus e. What we're going to do is we're going to start with x bar, right here in the center. If you subtract the amount of wiggle room that you have, that's the lower bound. If you take the x bar and you add the amount of wiggle room. Alpha is 1 minus C. Talking in more concrete terms for you, if I am 95% sure, then alpha would be 1 minus 95% or 5%. So let's find the margin of error with a small sample. Assuming the population is approximately normal and all samples have an equal probability of being chosen, it's a nice way of saying you can use the D chart. Find the margin of error for a sample of size of 10, small sample, use a T, given that S equals 15.5, level of confidence is 95%. According to what we need to be able to do, our margin of error formula is going to be the t-score times s divided by the square root of n. Let's go get our t-score. 95%, 10 in the sample, so we read 9 degrees of freedom. It's a confidence interval, so we'll automatically always be two tails in a confidence interval. And we were going to be 95% sure, which would leave us with 5% to be unsure, also known as alpha. So finishing this off, area in two tails with 5%, my critical value 2.262. So I'm going to take my 2.262 times the standard deviation divided by the square root of 10. Answer? My calculator tells me that the numerator would be 35.061 divided by the square root of 10, which is approximately 3.16 blah 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 
for a final answer of 11.087. The standard deviation was given to one decimal place, so I'll give to one decimal place. The error is 11.1. .1. Now let's try one where we do the whole deal. We're going to be looking at 20 selected computers, so it's a small sample. We will use a t-chart. Continuing to read on, the sample mean, there's x bar, standard deviation, are computed. We want a 98% confidence interval this time for all computers. We don't know about mu. We only know x bar. So mu will be x bar plus or minus our margin of error. Let's go find that first. Margin of error, like we just practiced, is going to be a t-score because of the small size times s divided by the square root of n. The t-score. There were 20 in our sample, so we read 19 degrees of freedom. It's a confidence interval, so it's going to be two tails, and we're looking for 98 percent confidence, which means that we're going to read 1 minus 98 percent, which is 2 percent. That is alpha. percent two point five three nine so I will take two point five three nine times the standard deviation of fifteen point eight six divided by the square root of twenty my margin of error will be 40.268 divided by the square root of 20 which is approximately 4.47 blah 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 when you do the division your margin of error to match the standard deviation would be 9.00 now let's go find x bar plus the margin of error and minus the margin of error. So we're going to be saying that the population mean is between x bar plus the error for the upper bound and x bar minus that error for my lower bound x bar is two hundred and sixteen dollars and fifty three cents minus nine dollars two hundred and sixteen dollars and fifty three cents plus the margin of error of nine dollars so my values are for a lower bound of two hundred and seven dollars and fifty three cents and an upper bound of two hundred twenty five dollars and fifty three cents I could also write that in interval notation and say the lower bound 207.53 to upper bound 225.53. We don't know about the mean, but we can say with 98% confidence in the population, the mean repair cost is between $207.53 to $225.53.